Hey everyone, how are you? I'm uh, back working on the cargo hold here. I was thinking a bit about this and I think I want to break this up into three pieces. I think I want it to be uh, this here be one piece and then the platform and this be one piece along with the hand railings. And then I think I only need the bottom part with the hand railing for the stairs. I think. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm not sure. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of testing. Um, so hello from the UK, Austria, Russia. It's great to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is break these out into individual units um, and then UV map them. So as I said, I don't think I need this part here like this. I think I can do without this. And I also think I can do without this in terms of making a modular um, thing here. <laughs> uh, so I think well, this is why I'm going to have to test it. Now, someone did bring up in the comments yesterday on the last video that they thought they could see a hand railing in here by the hole for the stairs. And sure enough, look at that. There's a, a hand railing or some sort of railing there so people don't, you know, fall in. So I think I'm going to add that. Um... And, and I think I didn't see that because I thought it was connecting it to the outside here with these pieces, but I don't think it is. I think it's actually there. Here we, here we go. You can see it here. So let me add that. Um, and then we'll start um, breaking these apart, UV, mapping them, taking them into a, a substance painter, and that kind of thing. But first of all, Let's uh, let, let's just grab one of these. I'm going to grab one of these and um, make sure my cursor is at the median point there. And then I'm going to hit the G key and then Shift Z. And now I can just slide it around in the X and the Y and maybe put one here. And I'm just trying to see. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Like this. And then maybe one over here, like this. And then I need a crossbar. And that, I could probably make that a cube. So I'm going to select those two, press Shift S, cursor to selected. And I can create a cube, scale it. Till it's about the right size, scale it in the Y now, and get it in between these things. So that's a little too big. Uh, I'll press S, Shift, Y, and now I'll just scale it in the X and the Z like that. There we go. And then uh, duplicate and move it up in the Z. Something like that. There we go. So now we've got little things so people don't fall in and hurt themselves. We wouldn't want that. So I'm going to grab these and just move them over in the X. Let me go to the top view. And let's just see how this looks. So maybe I could come over a little bit closer like that. Duplicate, move in the X. And there we go. Okay. So, I think that's going to help. There we go. Um, all right. What else do I need? I think that's going to be good because here's the deal. If I take this, oh, well, let me get these here. Let me grab these and move these to layer three. Okay. 
And so if I take this, and if I duplicate it and move it straight up, it should just fit. So let's try it. This is just a test. Yeah, see, like that. So that should work out for those. I'm just going to um, undo that and delete that. Now for over here, now these I think are going to have to be their own piece, right? Their own thing because uh, let me just move these to, uh, I'll move them straight down to the bottom layer. I'll hit M and just move these right down here for now. So now if I take these, and let's test this. So if I move this up, okay, I don't need this piece here, or do I? Yeah, I, uh, see, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> okay, let me undo these. Select this. Now, okay, now I can do this. Now if I duplicate and move these up, they will work like these, like this, right? Okay, so that will work. So it looks to me like I need three pieces. I need these two to be one piece, and I need these pieces to be their own individual pieces. And I think from those three pieces, I can build this entire complex on both sides um, in unity. I can just uh, snap them together in unity. So let's try this. Uh, let me see. Is this okay? There it is. And this okay. So now <laughs> uh, you can see I'm really having to think about this quite a bit. I think I can take these two and press Control J, and now that's all one object. And I have the pivot point for these two right down here. That's good. Now, for this, I can take all of this, press Control J, and that will combine all of these. And where do I want that pivot point? Probably. Oh, that didn't combine them now, did it? Let me try that again. There we go. Probably right here. I'm going to put that cursor right here. Let's see how that works. And so all I'm doing here is I'm just trying to begin to test this out and see if this will work. So I'm going to take this, select it all, control J. I don't think that did it. No, it didn't do it. That, that did it. And once again, that pivot point is right down here in the bottom of that piece. Okay. So I've got this piece, this piece, and that piece. All right. Is it going to work? Sure, why not? All right. So they're about, I think they're a good height over here compared to the uh, shipping containers. I th I'm okay with that. All right. So, let's begin UV mapping. Um, so, how's everybody doing out here? Uh, so, there's some good... All right. Uh, how much money will you earn for a video? Me, um, like a, a YouTube video? Uh, pennies. <laughs> um, uh, it just depends on how many people watch and how much the ads are going for, um, for the videos on, on YouTube. 
So it's really variable and really not that much. So I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing this on YouTube because I really enjoy um, interacting with people, and it makes me I like this live stream same time every day because it makes me put my butt in the chair and do the work. So I like that. So. And I get to say hi to people from Greece. Hi, thank you for joining us. Um, so let's work on UV mapping these. I'm not sure how we're going to do it, but that's what makes it fun. So I'm going to take this and let's go ahead and switch over to the uh, UV editing screen layout here. And I'll frame it up over here. All right, so what let's do is let's just try Smart UV Project. However, what I think I will do is make sure the scale is applied, and it is not yet. See how the scale is um, non-uniform. So what I'll do is press Control A and apply this, the scale, and now it's all ones and that's good and the rotation is all zeros that's good too all right so i'll tab into edit mode select everything hit u and smart uv project and let's see what happens there we go now i'm going to hit the n key over here no i'm going to hit the t key over here okay this says stretch to uv bounds and i don't think i want that i want it to be the actual size that it is over here, n not trying to stretch to uh, the, z the zero to one space. <clears throat> so that doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, trying to think, is there any way that I can get that to be a little bit more, um, fill a little bit more of the space here. I could move these things into the center. Let's try that. I'm going to hit control up arrow. And um, I feel like all of this could move into here. Let's see. I'm going to hit the B key to border select and kind of select all of these things here. And then uh, G and just move them out of the way over here. I got little tiny things over here. Geez, those are really small. That's probably not going to be good. But let's try it. I'm going to move these over here. And then, um, well, I don't know that there's a real way to get it too much better. I mean, I could use... Um, Mm. I don't think because if I stretch this up, we you know and tried to scale it up, it would stretch it a little bit too much. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. Let's try this. Okay. So the next one, let me grab this one here. Let's try this. Once again, I need my scale applied, control A, and scale. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode, select everything, U, and I'm going to use smart UV project again. Try that. That kind of works. All right, I'll go with that. I'm going to save. And let's try this one here. Bring that over here. Uh, check our scale. No, let's apply the scale. And now let's U and let's use Smart UV Project again for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I. However, I think I need to go in and change the island margin. I feel like I need it like 0.01, something like that. I don't like that. 
Hmm. That's not bad. Although these pieces are awfully far apart now. But it kind of fills the space. Let's let's try that with uh, one of the other ones here. Let me see how that works. Let me try this. So let me hit U, Smart UV Project again. And, oh, it's doing, I've, it's hanging on to the island margin here. Well, let's try it. And now how about, uh, which other one did I? Let's try this one here. U, Smart UV Project. That's not bad. Let's try that. Okay. So I've just changed the island m margin, the area between each of the islands, just to see how that helps, if any. Okay. So now, let's go back to our d default view. And I think what I can begin doing now is bringing these into Substance Painter. Um, let's see. Uh, do you not mark the seams? Um, I do for um, um, characters for more complex um, objects. So with these with these objects, with just uh, uh, basic planes, right? I think Smart UV Project works pretty well. However, what can happen is I can take this into Photoshop or Krita or you know Substance Painter and find that these pieces, that some of these pieces like these um, these here, are going to be too small on the UV um, on the UV UV map, and if that is the case, then I've got to come back and create seams and um, try it again. So, if it's a character, yeah. If it's a prominent um, object in the scene, then yeah, I will probably use seams. These are really going to be kind of far away so I'm just trying to do it quick let's see how it works and if I get burned <laughs> trying to do it that way um, so let's um, why not well, let's begin with this one here um, I'm gonna call this uh, let's call this um, what are we gonna call this uh, call this module, wait a minute, I'll call this cargo hold, module, stairs. I'm not sure if that's going to be good, but let's try that. So then I'll take that name, which is right here copy it and I'm going to create a new material for it right here and paste that in there so that's the name of the material as well uh, I'll take this one here I'll call this um, what am I going to call this I'll call this cargo hold module platform this Oop, I did that wrong didn't I try that again cargo module platform there we go let's take that create a new material paste it there we go um, and then this one same thing Let's call this uh, braces, just so I know what they are. Okay, 
So there they all are. And let's begin, I kind of want to begin with this. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to go File, Export, FBX, choose uh, Selected Objects. Let's, uh, I've got it here, Cargo Hold. Um, I don't want to call it Cargo Hold. I want to call it, um, well, I'll just use that name. Oh, stairs. There we go. Okay. Export. And there it goes. Now, let's go open it up in Substance Painter. Um, let's go to File, New. Let's go find it. I think it's in here. There it is right there. Bring that in. Uh, let's say OK. No meshes in scene. Failed to load 3D scene. No meshes in scene. All right. What did I do wrong? I didn't select it. <laughs> I I checked selected objects, but I didn't select anything. All right. Let's try that again. FPX selected objects. There it is. Export. Come back here. Let's try again. Don't save. Okay. Here we go. Now. Let's see how this works. There it is. Okay. However, what didn't I do? Here is something I didn't do. I didn't split this up using my vertex paint tool. So this is going to be all one material that I can't, uh, it's just going to be all one, all one, all one thing. Uh, so if I grabbed, let's say I grabbed, um, oh, I don't know, anything in here. Where's that iron raw? Let me drag that in here. So if I drag this in here and put this on it, I can't split it up. So that's a problem. Let's go back and split these out by material using our vertex color. All right. Here we go. So, what kind of materials, what are the different materials that are going to go into this? It looks to me like these pieces, the uh, braces, the platform, maybe the stairs, although they, they look a little bit different. But I know the platform and the braces are the same. And then it looks like we've got a different material for the hand railing there. All right, so let's go. Um, I'm going to go into edit mode. And I'll select uh, these pieces here. With the L key, like that. And uh, this whole piece up here. And do I want the stairs to be the same? Oh, you know what? I, I don't want... <laughs> I don't want my uh, UV islands over my image here. I want to be able to see my image. So I can change this by going over to View and change it to Paint. I'll do that for both of these. And then if I go back over here to view, I'll do the same thing over here. View, uh, show, where is it? Draw, texture paint UVs. Turn that off. Draw texture paint UVs. There we go. So now I can still see my image, even though I'm um, um, 
in edit mode over here. Uh, I think I'll select these guys down here. And let's say these are all the same material. Let's do that. Um, should the stairs be the same? Yeah, why not? Let's do that. Oh! Oh! That's a problem. Look at that. Dang it. So, what I did is I combined all of them before I uh, before I applied the array modifier. Dang. Okay, well, I'm going to select that, hit P, and separate by selection so it's its own object. All right. Um, now i got to go back and do that again. I do that all the time. Oh, that irks me. All right. So, I get to do this again. So I'm going to create an array. Um, I better take this, I better take the median point and put it back at the origin there, or at the geometry, origin to geometry, there we go. Create an array. I want to have it move in the Z, so zero there. Um, I'm going to want an offset both in the Z. Let me, I think I had 12 here. Let me give myself 12. So now I know I want it to be about that tall. And I'm going to give it an offset in the Y as well, like that. There we go. Ah, that makes me mad. <laughs> All right, so that looks pretty good. Okay, that's pretty much the way I had it, I think. So now, take that and apply it, and now I can combine it with this thing. Control-J. Which means I gotta go back and re-UV map it, right? Because now those are all new pieces. Man, all right. U, smart UV project, okay. I'm going to change the UV. Well, that's not bad. The island margin is zero, though. That's pretty small. What if I just did 0 0.01? No. Let me see what happens here. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Let's, let's go with that. Okay, now, <laughs> now let's work on creating our vertex ID or color map here. So, once again, do you think that they may eventually do away with the UVs in Blender and just paint like uh, ZBrush? Um, there is a technology that I think Disney is developing. Is it um, P-Tex that um, doesn't use UVs, which just would make me so happy. <laughs> it uh, doesn't use UVs. It actually uses the polygons um, as they are formed around uh, the model, but not all systems use PTEX yet. So my understanding is that many Disney animators now, texture painters, don't have to UV before they begin painting on the model, which would just be awesome. Um, so maybe someday when everybody uses PTEX, that would be that would be the way to go. I think I would love that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I like UVing, it's okay, but if I didn't have to do it, you know, I mean, I think maybe I've conv convinced myself I like it because I know I have to do it, but uh, that would be awesome. All right, so now I can select these things here, and yes, all of my stairs 
that I just had to recreate. I'm going to select all of those. And then I'm going to switch over to Vertex Paint here. And um, I'll give them a blue color. I'll turn this on so I can see this little guy right down here. So those are still selected from edit mode, and I'll press Shift K, and that assigns that color to those objects. So now in Substance Painter, it will see these as a, a material. All right, let's go back to edit mode, and uh, let me select these guys here. Each of these, and I guess I'll get these things too. Maybe they're the same material, like this. And might as well get these two here, like that. <coughs> okay, uh, switch to vertex paint, and uh, I'll switch to green. Right here, I have a new, or have a, a palette already saved for the green, Shift K, and assign those that green color. Oh, I should probably grab these little guys too, huh? These little things, are they the same material? They look to be. Yeah, okay. These little guys right here. What else? These. I'm just hovering over them and hitting the L key. Here. And these. And so these can be... Um, the same as those. So that'll be green. Shift K for those. Okay. Um, now the little wires here. Those I think are going to be a completely other material. Let's grab those. And now let's go ahead and create um, a new color. This can be red. And I'll hit plus, select that, and shift K. There we go. That gets that. And I, I think I want one more color right these things right here. Um, I don't know why, but I feel like those should be yet another color. So grab these. There we go. And um, another color. How about orange? Sure. Let's save the palette so we have it for the future. And there we go. Okay. So now we have these colors, the blue for the main parts, the green, the red, and the orange for each of these. Let's go go ahead. While I have it in my head, I'm going to go over and assign these two because, uh, or else I'll forget. Um, so, <laughs> and you know what? I already forgot. Uh, I, I, okay, I know these are blue. So, that's so sad. Okay. <laughs> as soon as I switch over, I forget. My mind goes blank. So, uh, let's go to Vertex Paint and turn that on. And then this was blue, right? There we go. Um, dang it, I can't believe I forgot. What else was it? So the next thing I did was these hand railings. Okay, I'll do that. So this like this and 
these. This one. Okay, so I'm pretty sure <laughs> that was green, so I'll select the green, Shift-K. Uh, the next would be the red for the ropes, right? Here we go. Yes, uh, question about the colors. Yeah, these are just random colors. They, they don't really mean anything. They're just going to be seen by Substance Painter um, as different objects, different materials, um, so that we can apply different materials and uh, 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 textures to them. So that was red, right? Okay, saving that. And then lastly, this tab in edit mode, they are all selected. Go to vertex paint, and these were blue. Shift K. All right. Now, save all of that. So, <coughs> let's, uh, once again, I wanted, I just want to do this one. <clears throat> so let's uh, give this a try here. Uh, nope, I want to go here. Okay. So I've got that selected. Let's try this. File, export, FBX. I'll just overwrite that. Come over here to Substance Painter. I don't need this anymore. New, don't save. Select, there it is, okay. Now, okay, I'm going to delete this layer. I don't need that. And um, let me see, there was uh, steel, this one right here. I think I'd like that to be that, the main parts here. So I'm gonna create a group. Call this, uh, I don't know, main metal. Let's try that. Drag the steel into there. Oh, before I do that, that looks good though. <laughs> before I do that, let me, uh, let me undo that. Uh, before I do that, I need to bake the textures here. So I'll click bake. Um, and I'm not going to, well, do I need a normal map? I don't think I need a normal map for this because, um, yeah, I don't think I need a normal map for this. Let's just delete or, um, uncheck that. I'll go ahead and choose 2048 again. That's kind of what I've been doing. And the ID. In the ID, I need to make sure that I'm choosing vertex color. All right, so let's try this. Bake those textures. So someone asks, how does uh, Substance Painter know the difference? Because I chose in baking the texture to uh, have it um, break it out by vertex color. That's how it knows. And that vertex color information is in the FBX file when we transfer it over here. So I'm going to grab that and drop that there. Okay. So that doesn't look too bad. I kind of, I kind of buy it actually. Um, it's a little bit shiny, but it's not too bad. So now I can come into the group, choose to add a mask with color s selection. Pick the color. There's my vertex colors that I created in Blender. Choose that and now I can only apply it to what was blue. Kind of cool. Save. <laughs> I want to save this. So this is cargo 
uh, module stairs. There we go. Um, I'd like a little bit more to it, though. I'd like it to be worn and grungy. So um, there's an iron rust in here. Here we go. This guy right here. Let's drop that. No, let's drop it in here. And then uh, let's add a black mask, right? And in that mask, let's add a generator. And that generator, I want to be dripping rust. Let's try that. No? How about if we invert it? Why is it so... I'm not getting anything here through here. Hmm. Let me try that again. Let me try that again. If I add a generator... That looks terrible. And I want to let me add a, a a dirt one here. Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting anything through that. Um, even when I invert it, I'm not getting anything through it. So let me try this. Let me try something else here. Clear mask. Remove mask. Let's try that. Um, can I just... I don't think I can just add a generator, can I? No. Well, what am I doing wrong? Dang it. Um, everything was going so well. I want to add a black mask, right? Yeah, and that shows it right through. And to that mask, I would like to add a generator. And I can select the drippy generator there. But I don't get any changes to it. That's what's interesting. Hmm. Because I can... Oh, there we go. Let's try this. Hmm. No, I'm just not getting anything. Interesting. I wonder why that is. Does it require the normal map to do this? Well. Huh. Well, that stinks. I'm going to try again. That usually works. Alright, I'm going to try again, and I'm going to bake the textures and this time I'm going to go ahead and add a normal map. I don't think that's it. But I'm going to try. Well, let's see. Uh... Does the vertex color thing work with applying materials in Unreal and Unity? Um, no. <laughs> um, however, uh, substance materials work in Unity and Unreal. Um, and then that might work. Although I don't think Unity and Unreal sees... 
um, vertex color. I'm not sure though. I don't think they do. I'm going to try this again because it's kind of ticking me off. So I'm going to add a mask with color selection and pick that color. And that looks pretty good. But um, I have been able to, in the past, um, use my iron. Where is it? The iron rusty here. Oh, didn't want to do that. I'm going to drag this over here like this. Get it on there. And then I should be able to, once again, add a mask. And then add a generator. choose a generator. There we go. I wonder if I needed a normal map for that. That's interesting. All right. Um, I'm going to invert it. No, that doesn't work. And I'm going to back it off just a bit here. There we go feel like it's a little... I'm not liking how it's turning out here though. Is my problem. Let's turn down the... Let's increase the roughness just a bit. There we go. And I'm not liking all of that Uh, intensity here. Let me bring the contrast down. It's just too much. Let me try and invert it here. Uh, uh, that's way too much. Yeah, it's too red. I don't like it. All right, so that's not working. Let's uh, try something else here. Um, what about this? Let's try this. Yikes. Oh, well, I'm certainly not a fan of that. I wonder if I could turn the height down here. No. Well, I can a little bit. Let's take it all the way. Yeah, something like that. It's not bad, but it just doesn't feel right. It feels a little bit different than I'm expecting. You know, I feel like it's it's not quite right. Maybe I need to uh, take that color here. Let me bring this down just a bit. So this is just a lot of tweaking. I know it's just not. I'll, uh, that's looking a little bit better. I like the a little bit darker, something like that. So this isn't one of those clean, pristine uh, cargo holds here. It's an old one. <laughs> it's actually supposed to be the bad guy's lair, the evil lair. So it's going to be kind of dark and, and run run down. All right, so I'm going to go with that for just for now and let's see how that works. Looks okay. I think I'll go with that. 
And then I'm going to work on some of these guys here. So um, let me create a new group. And for this, we'll call it uh, railing poles. And uh, for this, I kind of want it a little bit darker. Let me go with this one here. Let's try that. Okay, I want to uh, add mask with a color selection and choose the green. And there we go. Okay, let's try that. Um, now these things, they were kind of a white, a white thing. Um, let's go back and take a look at that. Yeah, they're a little bit whiter than everything else it looks like. Let's see them up here. So, what kind of substance or what kind of material would that be? Um, would it be an actual rope? Or just a lighter metal, like a wire? Let's try um, iron raw. Let's try this. Or, let's try raw, let's try that. Okay, so I'm gonna create a whole new group. Railing, uh, handle, or wire. Let's try that. Iron raw. Uh, mask, and let's select the red. Okay. They're a little bit too shiny, I think. So let's increase roughness like that. So it isn't quite so shiny. And then these guys here, what could they be? They were a little bit whiter as well, weren't they? Maybe I'll do the same thing, but uh, let's see, create a new group. Oh, let's get out of here. There it is. And um, we'll call this, uh, what what uh, called it railing, we'll call it uh, railing stairs. There we go. Um, iron raw. Let's do that again. Select that color. And, uh, there we go. Let's make that a little bit darker. Like that. Okay. So there we go. Save it. I want to change this guy here. I don't think I want it quite that dark. That. Okay. So now, uh, let's take a look at this. Um, here, I want to randomize this. There we go. So it isn't quite so pronounced. Okay. Well, there we go. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to need to do this with the. Uh, that's going to work. I'm curious to take that into Unity, actually, and see how that's going to work. But I think what I'll do is go ahead and get the other pieces taken care of, and then we can maybe tomorrow take those into Unity and see if we can uh, snap them 
together um, and build them up and see how they look. That'd be kind of cool. So yeah, let's do that tomorrow. All right. Well, I had a little bit of trouble with uh, a Substance Painter, but I think it worked out okay. Um, I really appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, joining me here. Um, but um, tomorrow, as I said, I think I will begin bringing these into Unity. I think we can get the other two done pretty quickly because I'm going to be able to save these individual groups, I think, as uh, uh, smart materials and then open them up in the other Substance Painter uh, files that I bring in for the other two and then just apply these same materials to the other ones as well. So I don't think it'll be too difficult. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great day, evening, but uh, um, I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.